Now let's talk about cleaning our rocket tubes. Basically when you get these out of the car, what you have to do, you can give them a soak and whatever you want, clean them up, but essentially you need a pin or some kind of strong thin metal, this is just some piano wire, um, but a pin would do. And you need to clean out all these little high pressure oil holes. Yeah, the main ones which will be clogged are these. In my case, these ones were absolutely gummed up. Uh, there was barely any oil getting through them, so the, en the engine was only not ticking once it was hot and the oil thinned out, managed to squeeze through the small holes what was left. So it's now been cleaned up. See a fair bit of gunks come out of it. This is a t tub of diesel. Um, this is actually a tub that's had, uh, I think, just the, f just the uh, intake and exhaust rocket tubes from the rear bank and um, also the lifters, which all broke. So well, I've bought new lifters. The lifters themselves fell apart. So you see, fair bit of gunk came out. This engine, I think, was mistreated. Not by me. Someone so here's our me. rocket tube. Now, it only goes in one way. Just in case you're curious. You can't just put it in and hope for the best. First of all, these bits here need to be facing down into these grooves. And secondly, this hole, there's only one of these on this tube, needs to line up with that hole. So if I had it the wrong way around, you can tell because I look here, and there is no hole there where there needs to be a hole, so turn it around and we can see the holes lined up. So we know which way around it goes now. Now let's take this out and put it here the right way around. And what I've done with my rockers is these rockers were all in the diesel here in the order they came off. So this is the second one in. first one and so forth and the clips go in where you can see these marks are so basically is it uh, uh, was in the middle and between the edge ones so what you need to do is you need to slide in your middle ones first or slide in your clip first then the middle ones either side of it and then keep working in from the outside okay here's the rear cylinder rear head intake cam, uh, intake uh, valve rocker tube and you can see I've put all these back on face in the correct way because we know that this is the rear of the motor face in that way this is the front and the valves are on this side otherwise take these all off and do it all over again but yes you can see why they have to be kept in the position they came from is because see how they bend in towards the valves if you get them wrong it'll be all stuffed up and won't line up so as it is if you've got these springs here and these slide back and forth, it's a bit of a pain getting into the motor because you've got to get it in and keep wiggling all these around until it fits. And the reason is, there is a very small gap in here, including this, so your spring would be here, and you have to get the rocker in over these lips, and what you have to do, you'll be sitting there wiggling the thing back and forth and moving them around until the whole thing sits in and clips in place. Once it does that, leave it, and we'll do the same procedure we did with the uh, exhaust valves, which is we find the cam lobe which is pointing up the most, which I think is going to be this one, yep, and we'll be putting the lifters in for this one first, and putting two bolts in to basically just uh, tighten that down just by hand so we don't lose right. those lifters out. Got this baby in, now, which one? We're going to do again. Let's have a look at this. A lot of movement, a lot of movement, a lot of movement, a lot of movement, very little. So we're going to start here. And we're going to basically lift this one up. Now, what will happen is I've got a man that will probably spring back out again. I'll have to reset the whole thing. But because I've got only two hands, I can put the two lifters in here and effectively hold this in place um, like this. And while I refit all these other ones um, with my spare free hand, then I can put a bolt in here to just basically hold this down so that we don't find that we end up lifting this up and the lift is falling. Okay, in. got my two lifters in the end here. I put one bolt in, finger tight, just not even finger tight, just enough to hold it so that it's not slipping. So that it's actually screwed in, you know, not going to fall out again. And you can see that these won't fall out now because they're quite tight. But I still have the ability to lift the rod here, see, which means I can get enough space in it to get lifters in both there and in the middle one so I'll go do that now all right all the lifters are in and I've decided to put the bolts in down to allow it just finger tight and now what we can do is we can start retightening the um, <coughs> the cam bolts so 
what you need to do is essentially work in a crisscross pattern. So you tighten a little bit, and then a little bit, and a little bit, 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 a little bit. Okay, so you just want to tighten each bolt a little bit starting at, you know, there, then here, then here, then here. Basically crisscrossing and then changing ends until, well, and I won't say until, the main reason is to make sure you torque down the actual um, uh, tube here and the cam caps uh, straight. So you don't basically tighten one end down and then they cause the other end to fly up and basically cause damage to it. You have to torque them down in, in that order. Once they're all tight and they've bottomed out, um, I would say bottomed out in terms of using your hand on something like this to turn it. Then you can start moving over to your socket, but um, it's meant to be 31 Newton meters. I would start low and work my way up. So I would start maybe at 20 and work my way up to 31. Um, now, if you've got one of those torque wrenches which goes from you know 10 to 210, I don't recommend using one of those. What I'm actually doing is I have a uh, 5 to 25 Newton meter torque wrench. Uh, which is very accurate. It's a Teng Tools uh, cal calibrated torque wrench. I'm going to be using that to take it up to 25 and then I'll go back to using my uh, normal wrench here and just give it a tiny smidge of a turn, very small, just to see the bolt move a tiny bit and I'll class that as good enough. Would be nice if I had enough tools to have a separate highly accurate torque wrench. I just don't have one yet. I should, but um, I'm classing that as good enough. So I'll go and do that now. Alright, everything's back together. All the bolts are torqued. There are lifters in every single valve. See the ones which are the little lobes are down. You can actually push them because they're not pumped up yet. And the ones where the lobes are pushing on the rocker, you can't, there's no giving them. But yeah, it'll rattle for a bit when we start it, but other than that, it should be a lot better now. Let's get the rocker cover back on.